Welcome back to the Perlerworks channel. My name is John. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made a large serving tray. In my case, this was a great use for scraps and offcuts from prior cutting board batches. I milled up a mix of walnut, cherry, maple, and ash to get the desired look. This tray was from my neighbors and is meant to sit atop a large ottoman in their living room. The dimensions of the tray are about 30 inches by 24 inches and it's about 2.5 inches tall. The first step is to create a large panel, and from that panel I can cut four sides off, fold them up, and I have a tray. When working with offcuts, everything is usually of varying widths and thicknesses. I planed them all down until each was flat and smooth, and from there I took them to the table saw to rip them into more strips of the same width. In this case, about three quarters of an inch. This would correspond to the thickness of the tray. Since this is such a large panel, I took the glue up in stages. The first stage consisted of three roughly 10 inch wide panels, and I didn't worry about using any alignment tools like dowels because I would run these over the joiner and through the planer once they were dry. With the three panels cleaned up, I could glue them up into the large single panel. This panel was about 36 by 30, so I had to use some of my pipe clamps. In the final shot, you can see the board bowing a bit from the clamping pressure. After noticing this, before the glue was dry, I went back and fixed the clamps to get rid of the bow. Once the panel was dry, I ran it through the drum sander. This is a 2244 sander, which means the drum is 22 inches long and open ended. The open end allows me to flip the panel end for end and get the remaining bits the first pass couldn't reach. Sanders like this are great, especially for tasks like this. However, shortly after I bought this, Jet came out with an updated version that allows the extension tables to fold down. On mine, the tables can't fold, and thus this thing takes up a ton of space. Now that I've essentially made an enormous cutting board, I can start turning it into a tray. I began by squaring up the ends with my track saw and then I gave it a light sanding while it was still a whole piece. It would be much easier to sand it now before it is cut up into a bunch of pieces. After that I took it to the table saw to rip all four sides. I set the fence to correspond with how tall I wanted the tray to be. My neighbors wanted the tray to have a low profile so I cut this at about two and a half inches or about two and five eighths. In this case, I cut the ends off before the sides, and this means I need to glue the sides back on before the ends. I used dowels to align everything nicely, and while that was drying, I worked on the end piece handles. I used the CNC router to cut out an elongated hole so that the tray could be picked up. The hole was about 8 inches by an inch and a quarter and this was a substantial amount of material relative to the size of that end piece and with the way the grain was oriented I needed to figure out a way to reinforce it. So I used the CNC to cut out a few rings that could be attached to either side of the handles. The grain of the rings runs perpendicular to the end piece which should act sort of like a plywood. The rings also provide a nice design feature as well as make the handles more comfortable to hold. Before gluing the rings onto the side pieces, I added a round over to the outside portions because I wouldn't be able to reach them with the router afterwards. I used the closest thing to a router table in my shop, which is my trim router flipped upside down in a vise. This is a little sketchy, but there isn't much material being removed, so it wasn't so bad. I used a combination of CA glue and wood glue to attach the rings. 
The CA glue will act like a clamp while the wood glue provides the long-term strength. Oftentimes, an activator for CA glue will be helpful, but in this situation, I wanted to have a little bit of time to align the rings perfectly. After the rings were dried, I could add the rest of the roundovers and sand off any burn marks. This was about the time I realized I should have flipped the order I cut the sides and ends. Because the sides were already glued on, there wasn't an easy way to reference the edge of the piece with my dowel max. This was an end grain glue joint, so it definitely needed reinforcement. My workaround was to glue it up while aligning all of the strips perfectly, and then come back and reinforce the joint with some Miller dowels. These are tapered dowels that correspond to a tapered drill bit. These dowels are perfect for situations like this where you have a joint already glued up but still want to reinforce it. And the walnut dowels look really nice too. All that was left to do was a bunch of sanding. I took this up to 220 and raised the grain with water. I like to do that anytime I'm using a wipe-on finish. The finish was Mahoney's Walnut Oil and was applied with a wipe-on wipe-off method. This required just two coats, though I told my neighbors if the tray ever looks thirsty, they can just drop it off for a fresh coat of oil. This wasn't my most complex or original project, but I really enjoyed working on it. I like the reinforced handles because they look nice and provide a needed function. The walnut dowels are much the same because they add strength to the tray and look great too. If you want to see projects like this while they're in progress, follow me on Instagram at Perillaworks. Until next time, thanks for watching.